what are the arguments the atheists give? I think you've hit on most of them. We had science, we had evolution, we had evil, we had Bible contradictions, we had, well, this has been copied or borrowed. You know, I think the atheists also make a big deal about reason, right? They say, we're reasonable. We're all about reason, and you guys aren't. You just have faith, okay? What's that? Oh, yeah, you're a hypocrite, right? They're inclusive. Yes, they are inclusive. They think they are, but they're not. Actually, every worldview is exclusive, but we'll talk about that at another time. <laughs> let's, uh, let's see some of the things they bring forth. Uh, you've already mentioned evolution points to atheism, according to Dawkins and many others. In fact, Dawkins is such an advocate of evolution, macroevolution that is, that he has actually said this. He said it's absolutely, it's absolutely safe to say that if you meet someone who claims not to believe in evolution, that person is ignorant, stupid, or insane, or wicked, but I'd rather not consider that. So he's very even keeled in his demeanor when it comes to this topic, as you can see, right? He's an objective guy, just unbiased. Yeah, he thinks you're nuts. And in his book, uh, The God Delusion, he says, look, Darwin has proven you don't need God for, for biology. And uh, although we may not have figured out everything else in physics, soon we're gonna Dar there's going to be a Darwin for physics, and we won't need God for that. So forget about it. There's no reason to argue for God. Uh, also, uh, science points to atheism. This is uh, Steven Weinberg. He's a professor down at UT Austin. He's won a Nobel Prize in physics. And he put it this way. He said, I personally feel that the teaching of modern science is corrosive of religious belief, and I'm all, all for that. If scientists can destroy the influence of religion on young people, then I think it may be the most important contribution that we can make. Now, I always thought, correct me if I'm wrong, but I always thought that a professor's primary contribution was to teach young people, to, to teach them truth, and to be better citizens. Not according to Weinberg. He thinks he has to destroy the influence of religion. That's his greatest contribution. Uh, oh, yes, many, there are many Jewish atheists, interestingly enough. And uh, my colleague, uh, the a guy I wrote, uh, I don't have enough faith to be an atheist, atheist with uh, Dr. Norman Geisler, uh, put it this way. He says, I love debating Jewish atheists. And we say, why? Because he says, I've never met a Jewish atheist person who thought the Holocaust was just a matter of opinion, right? Because if there is no God, right, there is no standard of rightness, so there can't be any standard of wrongness then, or there's no, there's no deficiency in rightness. If there's no objective good, there can't be real objective evil, yet you're saying that the Holocaust is evil? How so as an atheist? So it's real interesting. What do atheists tend to do? Well, they steal from God in order to argue against him, as we'll see when we get into evil. They're stealing a standard of good to say that God is evil, or the Holocaust is evil, or eating, eating meat is evil, or whatever they come up with, right? And they're stealing the standard of good in order to say that this is wrong. Also, uh, reason is supposed to be on the atheist side. This is uh, David Silverman. He's the president of American Atheists. I had an opportunity to debate him a couple of years ago down in Louisiana. And this was at the Reason Rally. You may have heard of the Reason Rally. It was held in 2012 on Washington, D.C., where a bunch of atheists got together to celebrate reason on the mall. And here's what he said in his little speech. He said, God is a myth and reason is inherently atheistic. It's inherently atheistic. Uh, Christopher Hitchens says, it's more moral to be an atheist. Hitchens, as you know, died a few years ago. This is a picture from our second debate. We had two debates and uh, both debates are on our website, uh, crossexamined.org, if you want to see them. Here's what he said, actually, in our first debate. He said, I consider it to be morally superior to be an atheist. I would rather live without that ghastly master-slave mentality of religion. So morality is on the side of atheism, too, according to Hitchens. Not only is morality on the side of atheists, but religion itself, and in fact, God himself in the Bible is evil, according back to our friend Richard Dawkins. Here's a quote we've talked about before in this class. This is a quote from The God Delusion. It's quite a good quote, actually. Dawkins is a great writer. Here's what he said. 
He said, the God of the Old Testament is arguably the most unpleasant character in all of fiction. Jealous and proud of it. A petty, unjust, unforgiving control freak. A vindictive, bloodthirsty, ethnic cleanser. A misogynistic, homophobic, racist, infanticidal, genocidal, filicidal, pestilential, megalomaniacal, sadomasochistic, capriciously malevolent bully. And those are his good qualities, right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Now, I mean, he's got the God of the Old Testament down on a casual reading of the Old Testament, right? God does all these things. This God is evil. So God himself is evil. Now, question. Are these things really arguments for atheism, reason, science, evolution, evil, morality? Are these really arguments for atheism? On the surface, they may appear to be, but when you dig a little bit, you realize they're not that at all. Now, some of you may be sitting here, well, you know, Frank, I don't really traffic in this area. I don't know who most of these people are. I don't run into these arguments. True, you may not run into these arguments. The problem is these arguments run into you.